Hello guys, welcome back to the crew Waltron Driving All Cars part number 76 The Saline S7 Twin Turbo Which um, seems to be having a tunnel patch problem here You can't see the dials and numbers in daylight This thing has, well, some of the cars in this game have a long nose It's not really the case here, here it's the other way around, so it has a long boot or uh, whatever you guys call that. And that makes it a bit of a, uh, well, I don't know. If it will suffer from it. What I do know is that uh, this thing which comes in uh, two specs being performance and circuit it's pretty fast and that is uh, mainly to do to top speed this is one of those cars that uh, has no brakes apparently just hit the train um, it's one of those cars that can beat the Ferrari 458 in circuit spec on top speed Lamborghini Gallardo does 455 this one can reach uh, 457 I believe with slipstream and in the crew and stuff like that while well, the Ferrari does uh, 448 or 449 something like that so on a track with long straights this is an option which can uh, beat the Ferrari for uh, time attacks and stuff like that the performance pick a bit more carbon here and there, different colors and um, some different rims. Um, the fastest time here is um, the Huayra with the 22.2, followed by the LaFerrari with the 22.5 and uh, We'll see what this one does. Can't remember what the uh, what the Gallardo did, but I believe it wasn't that fast in performance, acceleration-wise. So 22 for the Huayra, 22.5 for the LaFerrari, and also have another couple of cars, 22, including this one, 22.7. So acceleration. Definitely not bad for the performance pack. Kind of top, I guess. If you um, many videos, I consider 23 seconds above average, 24 seconds below average, and this one does a high 22, so that's kind of top of the range. The circuit pack. There we have um, 23 seconds below average, 22 seconds above average, and we have a 21.9 for the Ferrari 458. A big wing on it, uh, other than that, not that many difference with uh, the performance pack, so not really a body kit on here or something, but that's already helping, I think. 22.8, that is, um, well, it's above average for sure, but we have a couple of 22 second cars in circuit, so um, yeah, above average acceleration for the circuit spec. But really good in performance pretty good in circuit so acceleration is a pro or a plus for this car and so will top speed be we already know that I believe it can do 4, 30, 31 something um, in performance and 457, 458 in circuit that is in a crew and with slipstream and all, so... 
but you can't reach that if it doesn't have a high top speed to begin with. So top speed and acceleration, we can already fill that in as A+. Plus. And then we have to look for a minus, uh, so we're basically gonna look at handling and brakes. Bridge seems to be okay. First look, it uh, stops a bit from understeer, but that could be the track. Those first two corners, if you have to go wide because of traffic, like I had to do there, uh, that can be a problem. Also, there I had to go up throttle or at least brake a bit. The long rear is much to do with that. Sort of a short front of the car and a, a long rear and... Seems to me the weight balance is not that uh, spot on, let's put it that way. Kind of missed a jump there, so uh, we were not reaching 400, but we'll definitely do that on a longer straight. Sort of a little um, tricky, or even a little boat handling, that's what you get with this thing, but... Um, I'm thinking it probably is the best American to use, though, for American qualifier or something. Especially if top speed matters, then you're um, going to end up with this thing. Definitely for the American qualifiers and also sometimes um, for open qualifiers for speed traps or so. That is um, if you have to use a car. If you can use a bike, yeah, then you're gonna end up with the Kawasaki. Brakes um, seems to be okay on this one as well, so that's definitely not a minus, it's not like uh, they are in the Lamborghinis where you sort of hit the brakes and you're on a standstill, they are not that good, but they are good enough, not really a plus or a minus, it will be more of a plus than a minus, the brakes. The handling is a bit tricky though, it, it slides about here and there and But it has the acceleration, it has the top speed, so uh, you can catch up again. Especially with a little draft, this thing will be back up again with uh, the front runners. A 
better if you're doing a track with twisted corners like this. Yeah. Some of the corners you have to slow down with this thing while you can keep uh, on throttle with other cars. And that's probably where the difference is. going up there and um, turn around and see what we can do on the, about the top speed. These two should be able to reach 420. Not 100% sure but I think in, um, in circuit spec it has the highest top speed for a car. Only be beaten um, probably by the Kawasaki bike. And now um, this video series is made with um, all cars at 1299. With the new expansion upcoming at November 29th, we will have level 60 parts which also means that the cars will go to uh, most likely 1499. The whole thing might just change. I'm gonna do a new series about it, but um, I will do some tests once uh, they are there. I see the Gallardo is pretty good at this moment already. What will the replacement for that car? Uh, well, not replacement, replacement in real life, that is. The Gallardo is replaced by the Hurricane, and the Hurricane is going to come to the game. So, what is going that going to do? Is it going to be competition for the Ferrari 458? There might be a chance there. I don't expect uh, that much from the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta though. Um, this car, yeah, has the acceleration, has the top speed, a little tricky handling though. Um, circuit spec I would recommend, although the performance spec is also something you have to consider for twist, uh, speed traps and stuff like that. Although it doesn't have the highest top speed in performance, that is for the Nissan Fairlady. I'll see you guys in the next one, and bye for now.